right, welcome to prepare for Jakarta E11. My name is uh, Ivar Grimstad, and I'm the uh, Jakarta E developer advocate at Eclipse Foundation. And uh, consider yourself very lucky because you're the first one that will ever see this talk. I've never done it before, so uh, please, please uh, help me improve by uh, using the rating in the app afterwards and, and give me some feedback there. If you want to con connect with me after the talk or any time else, uh, you can find the social coordinates there and, and feel free to reach out uh, in, in any media you want. Let's just uh, d dive into it. So, when we talk about Jakarta EE, we, we talk about the specifications. I, I like to start my talks with the, the, this slide and, and just explain what, what the elements of a specification in Jakarta EE is. And, and we have a, a specification document which in textual form describes what a specification is and, and all the uh, requirements that uh, this particular specification consists of. And there is an API artifact which you would probably be the one uh, uh, which you would be using uh, from Maven Central when you uh, program against the specification. And there is a TZK or test compatibility kit uh, which tests that an implementation fulfills all the requirements uh, in the specification document and the API. And, and an implementation that passes the TCK is what we call a compatible implementation. And uh, we need at least one compatible implementation to ratify a final specification. And that uh, implementation has to be open source. Uh, other than that, uh, there can be multiple uh, compatible implementations that implement a specification of any uh, licenses. So the current release we have out now, now is Jakarta E10. It's about a year old. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to talk about Jakarta E10 here because you're here to her, hear about um, Jakarta E11. So these were the specifications that were updated in 10. And you can see there were lots of updates all, all over the, the spectrum of specifications and, and one new CDI light down in the corner there and a couple that weren't updated. Uh, if we compare this to uh, Jakarta E11, uh, you see uh, there are the same specification numbers. There is a new one added and one removed. So the, the number of specifications are the same. Uh, a little less number, I think it's about 17 specifications are updated. So these are the, the specifications uh, that we're going to look at in uh, this talk. And uh, Jakarta E11, if we talk about the... Uh, the uh, the, some of the specifications. We have the, the Jakarta E11 platform, which is uh, 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 the, all these specifications that are shown on this slide. If I remove these kind of more enterprise-y flavored specifications, I'm left with the web profile, which is the Jakarta E11 web, uh, web profile. And these are specifications that are targeting a more traditional web application. And if we take away th those that are considered uh, for uh, web UIs and uh, general web development, we're left with the Jakarta 11 core profile. And core profile was introduced in Jakarta 10. And a couple of, about half of these specifications are updated in 11. For Jakarta 11, we're actually raising the API level that we will compile our APIs to, to Java 21. And uh, that means that uh, you would you have to use uh, Java 21 in order to use Jakarta 11. And this is a kind of bold move to, to move that far, but th it also enables us to, to use some of the uh, Java 21 features in our specifications. And the TCK will run on uh, uh, Java SE 11, so all implementations will be required to be on, on, uh, on uh, Java SE 21. We're also introducing this release cadence that we've been working on for a while and, and trying it out now and see if it works. And what we want to do is to release uh, Jakarta EE about six to nine months after a uh, Java LTS release. So, so 21 was released in September. Uh, so, so around summer next year, uh, we're hoping to get uh, EE 11 out. And we will repeat that for the next LTS uh, about six to nine months after. We, we're also doing something new. We're going to release a milestone of 11 in December. And, and this is 
December 5th is, is the date for our conference called Jakarta One Livestream, where we will have some, some noise uh, around this milestone and 11 as well. And, and this uh, uh, milestone release will, all the specifications that consist of this will produce a specification document and an API. So we can bundle things together, compile it, and see that everything is kind of, it works. So it's kind of a trial run of, the, uh, of our build chain. And, and the, the target audience for this release isn't necessarily you as developers, albeit we, we will uh, appreciate all, all the uh, feedback you can give, but it's primarily the vendors, the, those that are going to implement it. So we don't expect to have a TCK ready or any compatible implementation at this point. But, but these are the kind of, the, make the specification API available so they can implement it. So as I said, uh, expect Jakarta 11 uh, somewhere around summer next year. The theme, it hasn't been kind of uh, figured out by marketing yet, but I hope the theme will be something in the lines of performance and developer productivity for this release. And let's see if we can meet those kind of, uh, kind of gui guidelines. And I'll start with going through some cross-cutting concerns that we're kind of doing across the, the, the releases. The specifications. One thing is, I don't know if any of you are, are using or have used managed beans, uh, but what we're doing is uh, removing it. So we're taking it away and replacing it by CDI. So, so no more managed beans, and that's the specification that uh, are removed from 11. Uh, also, the, the security manager is still deprecated in Java 21. So what we want to do is kind of future-proof this and remove all reference, references to Security Manager. So wherever we use Security Manager in the APIs, we'll remove it. That doesn't mean that applications cannot use it or implementations cannot use it, because they still can. It's still available in Java 21, so it's no issue there. But we, we don't want to reference it from the specifications. We also cleaning up the optional features. We, we do have, the individual specifications can still have optional features. That's fine. We, we do today have some optional specifications and optional features in the platform and web profile and core profile. And we want to kind of make this easier for the implementers. So we remove all optional things from the platform specification. And that, in, in, that means removing everything that was deprecated in 9 and 11, such as Corba and XML and SOAP and all these uh, other uh, protocols that aren't very much used anyway and, and are deprecated today, so we're removing it uh, fully in 11 for the platform and profiles. So for individual specifications, there can still exist optional features. Yeah. So let, let's go through uh, the specifications and look at uh, the updates. And the security is actually three specifications. It's authorization, authentication, and, and uh, the security API. And US developers are probably more familiar with the security APIs. The others are more SPIs uh, used uh, to implement the features. So, and uh, Jakarta security can be found in, uh, in uh, each specification has these pages. It's Jakarta E slash specification, and then slash A is short name for the specification and the version number. So this is kind of the URL structure for all specifications. And this is where you can find the security specifications. And they're doing a, a lot of things. I've just summarized a couple of these here. And it's, it's, it's about an authorization theme. So, so they, they are updating the authorization APIs. Uh, uh, also fixing the in interceptors for uh, authorization, and also abstracting the permission store, so uh, everything, all of this works together. They're also doing something in collaboration with MicroProfile, and, and that is a new specification there, which is called the MicroProfile JWT bridge. That will uh, make uh, JWT authentication with JWT tokens uh, possible in Jakarta E as well. So it, it's a it, it, it's an integration specification in between, so we don't get cycle uh, dependencies. For concurrency, uh, it's uh, version 3 to 1, and you can find the uh, information on this URL. And uh, th the main theme there is, is support for virtual threads or, or Project Loom. 
And uh, you know, in jQuery, we kind of have a hate-love relationship with threads, or we don't really use threads like explicitly. We use managed threads, managed executor service, and manage everything. So you kind of you should never create a thread on on your own in jQuery, but you kind of ask the container to to handle it for you. So, so, so what we're doing there is add some sort of manage it around where it makes sense about virtual threads. It doesn't make sense everywhere. There's still work in progress, but uh, something they've been working on is something like adding a, a parameter saying virtual equals true somewhere here and there, and then you'll get the virtual thread. For CDI and CDI Lite, which is the same specification actually, uh, it's um, this is the URL for for CDI. Uh, what they're doing there is add support for records and sealed types, so so they can be uh, injected here and there. Uh, uh, deprecate expression language. That uh, that's because expression language kind of was included in in core profile where it wasn't really needed. So so just to deprecate the use of it and and uh, replace it with something else. And also enable the add priority on, on producers. It's not a very big update. What they're also doing here is kind of the same thing as with the JWT bridge, is to create a integration spec where all the integration requirements are split out to a spec uh, that, that is a, the other Jakari specifications can rely on. So you don't have, because CDI works in, in both uh, Java SE and EE environments. So, so, so they remote, uh, rem split out the integration requirements in a CDI EE spec that is, uh, that is kind of integrating with the, the uh, Jakari specifications. This is also to, to avoid the, the cyclic dependencies. So it's a lot of cleaning up going on. Expression language, this is the URL. So, so they're rem uh, removing some things that are not required anymore, like the Java desktop and, and stuff, adding some properties. It's just a kind of a maintenance update uh, release. Really, the, the the reason why it's a major is that they uh, deprecate and remove some stuff as well. Faces FIDO though is uh, remove everything related to security manager. Uh, rely on CDI, so they kind of continue the theme they worked on in in CDI four uh, in Faces four to uh, to uh, go full of CDI. So so now uh, managed beans is gone, uh, and and uh, they kind of continue the, the road towards uh, full CDI. And also uh, remove some, some unused events and, and some, some stuff that isn't used anymore. Server 6.1 is also a, a minor release. Uh, removing a security manager, it's kind of the, the theme of, of this release. Uh, give you some more control of the, the uh, redirects, status codes and stuff. Uh, some convenience uh, methods for, for attributes and constants here and there, and clarifications of how to use the APIs. For persistence, they actually have a lot of updates. I couldn't list everything in this slide, but go to this URL and you see there are lots of stuff happen happening in persistence. It's still a main, minor update. Maybe it should have been a, 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 a major version, but because they're Deprecating everything uh, in, in calendar time and date and all this old stuff and replacing it with the uh, Java time, uh, time API. Um, and there are heaps of new convenience methods for everything uh, added. It, it's like a page full. Uh, so, so go to that URL on the previous slide and, and look it up. For pages, it's, it's a major version for the dough. So they, they align with uh, what's been done in servlet and expression language and uh, remove everything that was deprecated in 3 to 1. So, so they're doing the, the, the new uh, way of we are removing the features or, and, and in Jakarta EE is that we de deprecate things in a minor release and can remove it in a major, the release cycle afterwards. WebSocket 2 to row. Security manager removed again. So, so that this is Jet 4L, uh, 411 for uh, deprecating the, the security manager. It's still there, so you can still use it, but uh, we are removing references to it. Validation, 
You probably know it as bean validation. And you see, we haven't updated the URL uh, yet, but we are renaming this one from Jakarta bean validation to Jakarta validation to make it uh, uh, clearer. It validates more than beans, so it's kind of a better name. And the main thing there is support for Java, uh, Java records because uh, uh, validation wasn't updated in Jakarta 10, where, where we support uh, Java 17. So, so, so now it's uh, to make records validatable is the main uh, feature in validation. RESTful Web Services. Uh, this has been a release they have planned for a very long time. They wanted to do a 4.0 for Jakarta 10, but uh, landed on a 3.1 release uh, for maintaining backwards compatibility. So what they're doing now is to uh, drop the support for at context and replacing it with CDI. So they're co kind of continuing on all the go fully CDI theme that we've been working on for a while. Th they also want to check if there are any where an integration with the new uh, Jakarta concurrency it, it makes sense. And, uh, and also see if the, the uh, build time in injection, so CDI Lite enables to compile native to uh, using Graal VM. So, so, so they're, they're exploring if uh, something in Jakarta REST can be done to, to, to uh, use that fully out. Annotations. It's uh, a major update, but uh, the only thing they do is to remove managed beans. So it requires a, major, uh, a managed bean, is to remo remove one annotation. So, so get rid of managed beans because it's, it's not referenced anymore, so we don't need that annotation. So clean it up and get rid of it. Interceptors. Uh, it's a 2.2 uh, release. Uh, it's a, a add standard access to inter interceptor bindings. This is probably a little low-level stuff. I haven't used it myself before, but uh, what they're doing is add three methods to the invocation context where you can get the interceptors binders by, by querying it, and default implementations uh, for these as well. So you probably noticed that I passed by one of the specifications. And, and that is, of course, Jakarta data. And, and this is the new specification we're adding in, in Jakarta 11. And, and we're actually pretty excited that we were able to get it in because we, we needed to have a vote to go on to add a specification to the platform. And we were able to get Jakarta data in. And what Jakarta data does is that it standardizes the repository pattern for data access. And if any of you are Spring developers, you probably know Spring Data, and you have used this for a very long time. And finally, we're uh, getting it in uh, Jakarta EE as well. So, so it, it's basically a copy of, um, of Spring Data. And uh, I wanted to demo that because we actually have a implementation ready for this. So th the implementation currently available is uh, Open Liberty from IBM. So, so I'm, I'm using that one. Uh, and uh, since we don't have uh, Jakarta EE, is this big enough or should I beef up the font? Good. So, so I'm, I'm using Jakarta EE 10 because we, we don't have 11 available yet. And uh, since Jakarta data is not a part of 10, I have to add the dependency for uh, Jakarta data as well. Other than that, it's, it's uh, nothing here other than the Open Liberty plugin to, to start and stop the server. So I have the, the uh, application. It's a simple REST application. It just uh, extends uh, Jakarta REST application. And it has a, a greeting uh, entity that, I, that I'm retrieving from the database. And it has a ID name and a message field. And I have the, the greeting resource, which is slash greeting. It has a get, getter to find all. Now it returns an empty list. So it's just a hard code here. And it also has a, has a post, post method to, to add a greeting to the database. So if, if I just start this one, uh, start the, the, the server by, by using the uh, Liberty dev mode. So, so, so this one supports development mode, so, so it will update without restarting the server. 
and and uh, this is not covered by the specification, but some of the implementations have this. So so uh, and, and and now you can see it it, it just returns an, an empty list. That's the find all method. So let's add some stuff here. And and the first thing uh, I'm going to add is to add a. Uh, a, a repository so I can query the database. And uh, those who are familiar with, with Spring Data will probably know what I'm going to do. I'm going to create an interface, and I'm going to call it greeting repository. So I've created the, the, uh, the uh, greeting repository interface, and then I'll annotate it with at repository to show that it's a Jakarta data repository. And I will uh, extend Uh, the uh, CRUD repository of um, a greeting, and it has a primary key of long. So now, now I added a, a CRUD repository of type greeting with primary key uh, long, and that's, that's all, all I need for the basic stuff. So now I can, in my, uh, in my uh, gather for, for all the the, uh, the, uh, to find all the greetings. I, I can simply inject the greeting repository. So I'll just I inject it here. Uh, greeting repository. So, so I added the, the greeting repository, and now I can, rather than returning an, an empty collection, I can now uh, return a list that I retrieved from the greeting repository. So I'll just do the... Uh, greeting repository, and, and call the find all. And now you can see I, I have all these methods, find all, save, find by ID, uh, et cetera, that is generated for me uh, automatically. So I don't have to write these the queries for these uh, methods myself. Uh, just to find all and a two list, since it returns a, a stream. So now I've, I've implemented the, the getter method. Let's also implement the, the uh, add method, the, or the post. So I'll, I'll just here in 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 the uh, when I create the response I'll just call the greeting repository, and I'll call the save method, and I'll pass in the the greeting that is passed in to me, and and I'll just uh, do a uh, get ID for that because the, it returns the same object back with but with the with an uh, added primary key for me. So I'll just add the the ID and and. and uh, to the response here. So now I've, I've done this, we, we can go, in, go and check. It still returns an empty list. So let's populate the, the database by sending something uh, to it. And I'll just do it here by saying uh, a, a message, hello from Duke. That's the message. And, and the name is Duke. And I'll just send it to the, uh, with a post request to the uh, uh, greetings. So sending this JSON message in to, to the greeting. And uh, I hope that works. So, oh, I have clear after. So let's do this. So, so now I've, I've sent it in, and it should return uh, two since I did uh, two uh, inserts here. So, so now it's like you can see I have uh, two dukes. So, for for the rest of my demo to to work, I'm I'm actually going to uh, uh, let me see here uh, to remove one of them so I don't have two in the database. Edit data. Let's find, take this one and delete it. There you go. So, so I have one in the database. Let's add one more, but not with uh, the name Duke. So, 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 so now I'll, I'll send in, uh, let me see if I can find it there. I'll send it, hello from Mrs. Duke, and with the name Mrs. Duke. So, so to the same endpoint. Send it in there, and now you can see I have a message from Mrs. Duke and a message from Duke. So that I, if I now wanted to query uh, by name and just find this message from Duke, and, and not Mrs. Duke, uh, then, then I can, uh, in my greeting repository, I can, I can add a method. So, so, so what I'd add here, I'd add something that returns something optional uh, greeting, uh, and I'm going to call this find uh, by name ignore case. And I'll send in a string name. So, so I just created the interface 
method. And, and I use this, this uh, sort of domain specific language to, to some keywords in the, in the method, like find by and, and what attributes and stuff. Is it, there's a typo. Sorry. It, it's hard to see here with all the light. Did I get it right now? Ignore. There. Yes, thank you. So now I've, I've, I've done this. So, so now I'll, I'll just add, and I, I'm not going to type all this, I'll, I'll, I'll cheat. So, so, so here I, I, I add the slash name to the path. Uh, it's still a get, and it returns uh, just a string, and, and it just gets the, 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 the message from, from whatever I find in the database. Oh, sorry. So, so if, I, if I now go here, it, it still has these two in the database, and I query for Duke, it will find hello from Duke. If I write something that is not Duke, uh, I will find Duke not found. So, so, so this is how easy it is to, to add methods like, um, like the uh, to query thing. And there are lots of, of other keywords you can use for this uh, query method. So that's pretty cool. If you're a Spring developer, you're probably saying, yeah, we've had it for a while, but finally we can get it as well. So we have something called prospective specifications. And this is, we had a chat about it yesterday, and, and this is kind of a, if you think about it, a way for us to avoid uh, not having optional specifications if you kind of look at it one way. But the other way is, we want in the platform to kind of mention a couple of specifications that are potentially to be added in the next release. They don't have to be implemented now by anyone. They're there, they're available, you can implement them if you want to, uh, but they're not a part of the platform. And, and the prospective specification right now is uh, Jakarta MVC, which standardized the action-based model view controller pattern. Uh, and it's all, uh, by adding the at control annotation and at view annotation a little bit here and there uh, to, to, to build a MVC application on top of um, uh, Jakarta RESTful web services. Another one is Jakarta NoSQL, which is standardized integration with NoSQL databases. This is also a specification that are, it, they don't have a final release yet, but if they manage to get a final release out before we release 11, then they will be part of the prospective specifications because the requirement we have for a prospective specification is to have a final release. So I'm going to sum up and look back at Jakarta 9. That was to lower the entry barriers. It was a platform to create the platform for innovation so we can move forward and make the migration easy from EE8 or Java EE to Jakarta EE. Uh, so, so we didn't add much of functionality, so, so we wanted to make this as easy as possible. And this was all about the, the namespace change. So, so we changed it from Java X to Jakarta for all our packages. And this is kind of, we did it back a couple of years ago, but it's kind of hitting the ecosystem from yeah, late last year when Spring Boot 3 and Spring 6 came around. and sort of everybody has to do this. So luckily I have a talk tomorrow where I migrate a specification, no, a, a application from Spring Boot 2 to Spring Boot 3 with focus on how to deal with the namespace change. So, so, so if you're interested in that and Spring developers, come to that session tomorrow and I'll uh, walk you through all of this. Then Jakarta 10 uh, kind of uh, built on top of the um, the, uh, uh, after the names was changed, we had the platform ready for uh, development. So you saw all the specifications that were updated in 10. It's uh, more than half of them. Uh, and uh, uh, a lot of them major updates, some of them minor. A lot of deprecations here and there, and that's what we see in 11, that uh, these deprecated things are now removed. So we're starting to clean up and modernize and slim down and make the platform more modern. We also enabled the support for, for uh, native uh, compilation. 
And then we have Jakarta 11, which is the one we're working on right now. Jakarta data is a new specification. And we have updates in uh, about half of the specifications uh, that remain. The, the gray ones may be updated for next release, or may not. They're, they're currently not any, anything that are marked for deprecation or removed, but we're working on a theme of going more fully over to CDI. So, so the uh, Enterprise Beans specifications are kind of the ones that are living a little bit dangerous, and we may want to move, uh, remove them in the future and go uh, fully CDI. Uh, that's the discussion going on, at least. And the, the, I hope we can meet this goal of performance and developer productivity. If you look at two of the specifications, such as concurrency, adding support for Loom, and uh, data, Adding, simplifying data access, and uh, the others removing and deprecating things that isn't used anymore, I think we can meet both performance and developer productivity. And also, since we're uh, running on Java 21, we're using the, the modern uh, JVM as well. Everything compiled to 21, so, so, so we can use 21 features in the APIs. Uh, of, of these APIs, it's mostly concurrency that are using 21 features, but uh, we're all compiling everything to 21, and uh, we're making sure that the TCK runs on 21 as well. So all implementations will be supporting 21. If you want to know more about Jakarta EE, you go to jakarta.ee. And one new thing we've added, and we're working on making it uh, look better, is uh, a starter for Jakarta EE. So up in the corner, you'll find a, a yellow button or orange button called Starter. And it will lead you to a website called startjakarta.ee, where you can generate a, uh, a uh, Jakarta uh, application by simply uh, selecting a couple of, of options and generate a zip file, unzip it, and run it. The demo I showed you here today was created from the Starter, just by generating it there. So, so, so if you want to try it out, that's where we can go. We support 8, 9, and 10. And as soon as we have something for 11 available, we will add 11 as well. And we're working on it to extend the functionality with some more demos and examples. So the starter is uh, worth, worth a try. Uh, as I said, the, the, the URL structure for specifications is like specification slash and then the short name. If you can't remember the short name, go to Jakarta E slash specifications. And there you can find the list of all specifications and, and everything is there uh, linked uh, to. If you want to have a weekly update from Jakarta, uh, subscribe to my blog. I, I write a, a weekly hashtag Jakarta. And uh, the uh, demo code for uh, this talk is, it's not the Jakarta Duke, it's called uh, Duke's data, but it's on my uh, GitHub. I'll update the, the slides before I publish them. But uh, go to my GitHub and you'll find all this uh, demo code available. If you want to learn about Jakarta E and Jakarta E 10, so you're prepared for 11, uh, we have a course available on LinkedIn Learning. So you can go to uh, LinkedIn Learning if you have an account there, or scan this QR code, or just search for Jakarta E overview, and you can get, do this course and get a, a nice badge on your uh, LinkedIn profile. And some more Jakarta uh, sessions here. In, in about one and a half hour, we have the Jakarta community bo buff, where I'll uh, host that uh, together with uh, Edwin. So please come there if you want to discuss uh, Jakarta 11 or even Jakarta 10 or 9. We can discuss everything there. Uh, and as I said, I also have a, a session tomorrow morning uh, from Springwood 2 to Springwood 3 and what's Jakarta got to do with it. Or as it says in the... In the, the the pro program, it's uh, uh, from Springboard 2 to Springboard 3 with Jakarta E and Java 21. So with that, I thank you very much for listening. And um, we have uh, some minutes for questions. So please feel free to ask questions. Yes, we have one over there. Okay, so the question is, uh, why isn't Jakarta data part of JPA? Uh, and the reason for that is that um, 
it's kept out of JPA because currently JPA is, is one of the options you can have as a present uh, mechanism. But in the future, it could be uh, a facade over uh, NoSQL as well. So if you want to, to query other kinds of data sources, then uh, that would just be a configuration to use. So, so it, it's kind of on purpose lifted out of uh, JPA. Uh, so the question is whether it will uh, only be available with JPA from the beginning. I think so. It is not tied to that, but that depends on the implementations. Currently, uh, JPA or Jakarta persistent is the persistent mechanism we have in in there. But but um, I'm I'm sure it's possible to create other implementations if if someone wanted it. Any more questions? Okay, thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoy the 20th DevOps, and I hope to see you in the buff and the talk tomorrow. Thank you very much. <laughs>